In this video I'm gonna take you through a full air source heat pump installation in a two-bedroom bungalow. If you're an engineer who's thinking about going into renewables or maybe you yourself are thinking of having one of these units installed, this is a video for you as you will be able to understand what's involved in the process of a full retrofit air source heat pump installation. I really can't stay. Well, baby, it's cold outside. I got to go well, Baby, it's cold outside. This evening has been, been hoping that you drop. The coffee's getting cold really quickly today. Good, makes you move a lot. We don't have to do any footings for heat pump because we've got nice solid paving, but we have to create a soak away. Externally we have to run primary pipe work flow and return from the unit going to most likely a cylinder location where there will be a diverter valve diverting flow from the heat pump to either heating or hot water and we are installing our cylinder in the loft. That pipe work is obviously insulated and we install a purpose-made trunking. Now underneath the unit there is what's called a soak away. It's basically a four inch pipe dug uh, almost a meter into the ground we drill holes through that pipe and we surround it with shingle so that when the uh, pump goes to defrost all that condensation can safely drain away under the heat pump into the ground so it doesn't create a hazard for people walking in front of the heat pump because it would freeze up really quickly. There's a trace heated element going inside the 4-inch pipe and then inch and a quarter uh, waste pipe work will be connecting the heat pump outlet into the 4-inch pipe work. Behind the unit, on the back of the unit, we also have one antifreeze valve on the return pipe work on the lowest point that will open if the temperature drops below 3 degrees C and drain, drain the unit from water to avoid uh, damage to the heat exchanger and also a couple of flexible connections so that any potential vibrations from the unit are not transferred back uh, through the pipework to the building. So that pretty much sums up the external works. The top cap on the trunking is already on, uh, all the wiring is finished, all the pipework is fully insulated. The unit is fixed to the floor as well and my condensed soak away is connected to the heat pump and trace heat element. So it's a wire that heats up to melt any potential icing is dropped through the pipe inside into the soak away. Now we are inside and we are going to the loft. That's where the other part of the work will happen. We've got our primary pipework already in the loft and the cylinder in place. Greg is insulating the pipework. This pipework here is flow and return, primary pipework for central heating and hot and cold water. Just, just beautiful. So I'm pretty lucky here. Everything I need is right where I need it. We're in the kitchen now. The heat pump is just outside this wall where this boiler is installed. We'll be removing this boiler and it's a 25 kilowatts combination boiler. However, we've been running this boiler at 40 degrees C and the, uh, there's 21 uh, degrees C inside. So we know this property is really well insulated. We now know it's fully suitable uh, for an air source heat pump installation. I'm in the middle of putting the pipework in. The boys are changing the radiators. The principles here are really simple. The setups of heat pumps, people think they're complicated. They're really, really simple. So that's it, three port valve, flow to the cylinder, flow to central heating, flow coming from the heat pump, return to the heat pump, and then return from right there from all the radiators. We've got primary pipe work from the heat pump. That's the return with a isolating valve with the filter on it, and that's flow from the heat pump going to the free port valve by the cylinder. Those three pipes, this is mains water going to the cylinder that will be connecting to those pipes there, existing ones, and that's flow and return right here. Before we can specify a heat pump for, uh, for a given property, we do what is called a heat loss calculation. We calculate how much power is required to uh, warm the property up to 21 degrees and maintain 21 degrees inside the property at what we call a design temperature, a design external temperature. And in our case, it's minus two degrees. And strangely today, we are at design temperature of minus two right here. There are just two methods that you would use when calculating heat loss these days. One of them is longhand pen and paper, and the other one is using software. And there's just one piece of software out there that does the job well, which is a heat engineer. I'll post a link to the heat engineer up here. 
I wouldn't even dream of using any five quid phone app f uh, from Mr. Boyd or anything like it. They just don't work. They're nowhere near accurate enough. And this little bungalow is calculated at 3.7 kilowatts. So this little heat pump of 3.5 kilowatts will provide heating and hot water requirement for this property. Now, if you're thinking, but it's less than the calculated heat loss of 3.7. Now, this is where it gets a bit confusing. Different manufacturers have different ways of naming their heat pumps. This little heat pump can output actually more than 3.5 depending on the flow temperature. I'm gonna put a chart on the screen so you can see exactly what it outputs for the flow temperature and the external temperature. From the top of my head, if I remember correctly, this 3.5 at minus 2 and a flow of 40 outputs something like 4.2 or 4.4 kilowatts. Now for the, one of the more satisfying parts of the job. Cupping the gas off. Right, so these days we live in a crazy world and there's more than one reason for people to stop using gas. Historically, people wanted to stop using gas for environmental reasons, but these days we've got geopolitical reasons as well. We also have crazy prices of gas that make those uh, heat pump systems much more viable. They finally are able to compete on running costs with gas and actually outperform gas by a large margin on decently installed systems. So this is our robo kit expansion vessel, pressure relief, uh, filling loop, and an auto bypass between flow and return. And finally, after days of hard work, we can turn the unit on and hope it works. This unit is on, so I have no communication errors, which is great, so good start. Now I have to set it all up and fire the heat pump. So on this particular heat pump, the circulating pump is inside the external unit. Not all heat pumps are like that. Some heat pumps do not have a circulator and you have to provide your own. Uh, also, sometimes people put a buffer, which we try to design out, especially in a system tiny as this one, because relying only on the heat pump circulator uh, is easier to control and allow us better efficiencies of the system most of the time. And now there's a little bit of setting up to be done on this unit. We obviously don't want German language, do we? English. Date, time, and actually you set up the type of the system on, on this unit. This is also where you set up your temperatures, schedules, and uh, weather compensation curve. I can hear water sloshing in the radiator so the circulator pump is on. Let's go outside. And the unit is running. You can vaguely hear the compressor noise and cold, cold air coming from, from the fan. I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. I got to go away. Baby, it's cold outside. This evening has so we are back on site uh, after the weekend and we've missed the coldest uh, spell of this winter. It's now 11 degrees outside of a shame because it would have been great to be able to test this unit in the coldest of weathers. Now something about how those systems uh, should be controlled. From my limited experience I think the best way to control them is on what is called pure weather compensation. Uh, traditionally we are used to set the temperature on the thermostat. Once the temperature, internal temperature is reached the heat source stops, be it a boiler or a heat pump. However both on boilers and heat pumps it is way better not to use an internal uh, room reference. So not to use the stat. Don't let the stat turn the boiler or turn your heat pump on because you might be running your heating appliance too hot. So if you run your heat pump at too high flow temperature, not as efficiently as you could do, you'll never know that because the internal temperature will stay at 21. The room stat will just stop the heat pump from firing and it will fire it again once the uh, internal temperature drops. If you set it to what's called pure weather compensation, however, so the heat pump just runs all the time, the only thing you can do on the controller is to lower or raise the heat curve or weather compensation curve. What it means is if you are not reaching the target temperature inside, you know the flow temperature is too low. You then go to the unit and raise the curve till you hit that sweet spot that the heat pump is only replacing the energy lost from the building. And you can see the unit just runs at absolute minimum modulation. 
and we can interrogate the unit to see how much energy it's using and what's the yield, how much heat it's producing for the property. Here we can see current electrical consumption. Right now the unit is uh, consuming 400 watts. They already have cheaper tariff at night. They also have batteries and they're getting solar panels. So it's not impossible for that to be covered in a large part by cheaper tariff overnight from the batteries and solar. So this property should have a really affordable heating system right now in terms of the running cost. I've installed a number of those units this year and apart from one, they all performed exceptionally well through this really, really cold spell last week. One of the units caused some issues because it was going to defrost too often and it was keeping the property at around 17, 18 degrees, not 21. And we figured out it was an airflow issue, so we have to move that unit somewhere else. So, when done well, this technology absolutely works. However, the margin of error is quite narrow. You do need to get things right. You need to get the airflow, the pipe work, the uh, unit sizing, heat loss, radiator sizing. You need to get it pretty much spot on. Otherwise, you might run into problems, but it's doable. It's absolutely doable installing those units in properties, including period properties, and keeping them warm at even lower costs than running your gas boiler. Now, before you go, there's one more thing we have to do. We have to give this heat pump a heat geek seal of approval. I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. I got to go away. Baby, it's cold outside. This evening has been, been hoping that you drop so in. very nice. I hold so your hands that just like guys. My mother will start to Beautiful. worry. Beautiful, what's your mind?